guys, how are you guys doing? I hope you guys are all doing well. My name is Kinzani. If it is your first time here, and welcome to my channel. What's good, watch popping? I hope you guys are all doing absolutely amazing. I'm so so happy and excited. This is my first video for 2024. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! I am so so excited. So today's video, I wanted to share my 23 lessons that I learned in 2023. I hope that they just speak to you and I hope that they also just encourage you I guess <laughs> but before we get right into this video please don't forget to give this video a big massive thumbs up comment down below subscribe to my channel and let's get right into the video one is that sometimes God's will is painful. Sometimes we assume that God's will is to make us comfortable, to make us feel rainbows and sunshine and it's always to bless us but like we don't really think about the fact that sometimes the Lord's will is painful. It reminds me of Jesus when he was asking like Lord let this cup pass me by because this will of yours that you're asking me to do is actually quite painful but he says but not my will but yours you know and it just Put a lot into perspective for me to remind me that you know sometimes god's will is painful next one is to remain connected to the vine i got this principle from john 15 where it basically said where jesus said abide in me i shall abide in you i'm the vine you're the branches and you can do nothing without me essentially and this just came to me of just remain connected to me and it's like if anything just crumbles just remain connected to me like that's that's your lifeline that's your support like that's all you need just remain connected to me because the moment you lose that connection there's a disconnect you can't really see god's path you can't really see the direction you can't really see his hand because there's a disconnect so the best thing you can do is remain connected it says if you draw near to him he'll draw near to you you want to remain that you're consistently near next one is god truly is sovereign faithful and good i said this in my lawala negotiations vlog right at the end that like god really showed himself as sovereign like did you know that god really has everything all orchestrated he is all knowing he's all powerful he's wise he's in control he really is now i'm the type of person where i like planning things out i like going ahead of god and be like god per i can plan this for you i can do it for you but did you know god actually doesn't need your help he just asks you to just be still and know that he is god that's what he says he doesn't need you to help him help you he doesn't <laughs> And I learned that because I realized I struggled a lot with these principles about God being sovereign, faithful, and good. And God showed me I really am good, faithful, and sovereign. And now I'm just like, he really is. I think it's a beautiful thing that God really showed these attributes of his character to me in a way of, I really am good. And yes, sometimes my will is painful. And yes, sometimes you have to go through really hard moments. And yes, sometimes I'll refine you and crush you. And yes, life is not going to be easy. And yes, it's not going to be comfortable. But I have it all under control. And I really believe that now. <laughs> I never used to believe that before. But now I really believe that. And I'm so thankful for that. Next one is all of this that we go through is all for his glory and my good. And it's all purposeful. I kind of said this above. But truly, everything that you do, everything that he does, everything that we go through in this life, you know, that God allows, it's all for his glory and it's all for your good. That scripture in Romans where it says that he does all things for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. You know, like all seasons are purposeful. You can't have spring without winter. All purposeful. Everything is purposeful. All seasons are purposeful. There's a time for everything and it's purposeful. And God doesn't waste a season. Like if God, if there's a storm in your life right now, there's a rainbow coming. And the storm is purposeful and you'll only be able to grasp how purposeful that storm was often you'll be like that storm was actually necessary god thank you for sending me the storm like one of the things i really struggled with that i was like god i don't understand the point or the purpose of suffering or pain i get it now i <laughs> it's weird but i really get it now and the beauty of what god shows you in the midst of the valley like i think jackie hill perry posted something like that where she's like it's such a beautiful thing to experience god in the hills but man, oh man, is there something about experiencing his glory while in the valley. Like, th that hits different. It hits different and it's beautiful. Next question is, I learned to have unconditional love for others. This is something where God really just refined 
find me and i realized i have conditional love for people and i need to have unconditional love for people and it's necessary to have unconditional love the same way that jesus has unconditional love for us we need to extend that out to other people as well next one kind of follows up with that is i had a hosea moment and that taught me the heart of christ and because i learned the heart of christ i learned unconditional love and i learned how limited my love is towards people and my love isn't the way god defines it in the bible my love is not patient my love is not kind my love is not 1 corinthians 13 it's actually quite limited and conditional which always convicted me like the holy spirit taught me this thing of like do you really love someone if you're gonna withhold your love from them withdraw from them flee from them run away from them is that really loving most likely not no <laughs> no it's not so i learned that through having a hosea moment and it taught me the heart of christ and in learning jesus heart for me it led me to repentance so much that i was like i want to extend your heart towards other people as well next one which follows up with the same thing somewhat is to be humble and merciful and not self-righteous and prideful man i never thought i was as self-righteous as god showed me last year I had no idea I was as self-righteous. I had no idea I was as prideful. Me, Kinsani, I saw the speck in someone else's eye and I was quick to judge. I was quick to be like, oh, but I'm better. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That I didn't see the log in my own eye. And God showed me my log. God showed me my log of BB. <laughs> You're very self-righteous. I never thought I was as self- I knew I was self-righteous, but I never knew I was as self-righteous and that that led me to repentance and i was like and i started to pray to be like lord may i be more humble and merciful and not self-righteous and prideful and god always gave me opportunities to be like okay you see here you're about to be self-righteous let's be humble okay here merciful here unconditional love here like he gave me those opportunities for the lesson to then take root because i said this in a video last year about the fruits of the spirit if you ask for peace patience love whatever like he's not going to just give it to you he's going to give you opportunities for you to then be patient loving kind all of that stuff he's going to give you opportunities he's not going to just give you the fruit of the spirit he's going to give you opportunities to practice said virtues next point is everything in life requires effort we are so quick to be such a microwave be generation where things need to happen like this like this like this like this like this for me it should be easy it shouldn't be hard why is it so hard it should be so easy or we look at other people's lives and we like it's better if only i did it like that we better the grass is not greener on the other side it's where you water it everything in life requires effort you don't just get a good relationship you put effort into it to make a good relationship or a good friendship or a good career or good marks or good relationship with god or whatever the case might be it requires effort on your part you're not just gonna wake up and have such deep faith it requires effort everything in life requires effort and the sooner you learn that the better next point is to remain hopeful in the good the bad and the ugly i remember this was my word for last year and i first expected be hopeful for the good you know it's giving motivation be hopeful for the good and i remember a friend was like but anticipate bad and ugly as well when the bad and ugly knocked on my door I was thankful that I had hope. I was thankful that I had faith and that carried me. That was my lifeline. And it's a beautiful thing to have hope even when it seems like there's no need to have hope. Cause after when God shows himself strong, you're like, ah, and I had the hope and I had the faith. And it just, it's such a beautiful feeling that your faith and hope never wavered. So remain hopeful in the good, the bad and the ugly. It's easier to be hopeful in the good, but man, you need to carry tightly because the enemy, all the enemy cares for is to steal your hope and your faith. Because if you have no faith and hope, what do you have? What do you have? You have nothing, which is why think about how sad the world is now. It's so dark. Everyone is just, it's so sad to look at the lives of the lost, the unsaved, because like you don't have the miracle that I have. So if I have this miracle, that so many people desperately need, whether they know it or not. Why am I so careless with it? I should hold it so tight. Next one is to surrender my savior complex and understanding mental capacity. I needed to repent for my savior mentality and feeling like I am everyone's savior because I am close to Jesus. So therefore, because I'm close to Jesus, I can give you Jesus instead of leading people to the well, which is Jesus. Like I should be like, oh, this is what you're going through. 
let me take you to Jesus, not let me help you, let me fix it, let me, that's not my job. And even with mental capacity, I am not called to carry every single thing. Jesus says his burden is, his burden and his yoke is easy and it is light. Me, when I think that I can do everything by myself, the burden becomes heavy, heavy and hard. And then I complain. I wasn't called to carry all of those things. Another thing I learned is not perfection, but holy intention. God is not after your perfection, but he is after your holy intention. Being intentional, like I said, everything in life requires effort. God looks at your effort. He doesn't look at the fiction of, look God, I did it perfectly. He looks at your holy intention. Next one we have is Jesus is my treasure. If he is all I have, I have everything I need and he is my Lord and my savior and my treasure. And I learned this reading Desiring God by John Piper as well as The Pursuit of God by A.W. Toza. The essence that Jesus is my treasure and like if you say that he's your Lord and your savior, you cannot just say he's your Lord and your savior, but you live a rebellious, unobedient life towards him. If he's your Lord and savior, he should also be treasured. Like, what's the point of saying, oh, he's my Lord and Savior, but you don't treasure him? It doesn't show that he's your treasure. It doesn't show that he's your everything. Is he really then your Lord and Savior? Because Savior is he saved you. Lord is he's your master. Does your life really represent and show that? Most likely than not, that's not the case. So Jesus should be treasured. You should be like the man that goes to a field, digs up the digs up in a field, finds the kingdom of heaven, goes up in his joy, sells everything that he has to purchase that field because he's found the kingdom of heaven, he's found treasure and his life shows that I'm gonna leave everything because I found treasure. Your life should show that Jesus is your treasure. Like let 2024 be the year where people can tell that Jesus is your treasure. Next we have is overcompensating or doing too much is a lack of unbelief. That's a deep one. <laughs> it's a deep one. Doing too much to prove that you're a Christian or that you're this or you're that or you're that is it's because of a lack of unbelief. You're overcompensating for a lack of unbelief. No, a lack of belief, sorry. Because of unbelief. Sorry, my bad. A lack of belief. My bad, my bad, my bad. Um, overcompensating or doing too much if you're overly legalistic overly religious overly spiritual overly this overly whatever the case might be you're overcompensating because following jesus is actually very simple it's the hardest thing you'll ever do but it's simple his precepts his commands his laws his his rules his commands they're there he didn't stutter when he said them it's simple he says pick up your cross and follow me leave everything you have die to yourself and follow me <laughs> simple he didn't make it overly complicated he didn't give you a long list of rules a long list of things it's simple so if you do too much it's overcompensating for unbelief next one we have is jesus you don't owe me anything you have given me more than enough me feeling entitled to god i need this and this and that and that and that and that says who because he's given me salvation and grace and mercy and that is more than enough jesus doesn't owe me a job a car a marriage a this a that an easy soft life he doesn't owe me any of that so i shouldn't come to him entitled thinking yeah you need to do this and this and this for me jesus set your perspectives right set your perspectives right next one is god is a god of detail if you pay attention to the details he is speaking if you really pay attention to the details he's always speaking we like fixating on these big supernatural details but like the still small voicey details that's also God. Next one we have is God's delay is development. And I, I, I had moments of God, why would you cause this delay? And then God is like, cause you need to develop. <laughs> you need some character development. You need this, that, 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 that. And I was like, hmm. If God causes a delay, it's because it's purposeful. Like I said, everything he does is for his glory and for your good. Everything he does is purposeful. So even when he causes delay, it's for development, it's purposeful, it's for your good, it's for his glory. Next one we have is holiness over comfort. God does not care about your comfort. He doesn't care about your comfort. <laughs> he cares about your holiness. He cares about your sanctification. He cares about your consecration, not your comfort. And if you think that life is all about comfort, you've missed it. Jesus wants you to be holy. Be made holy as I am holy. That's why he prunes you. That's why he sanctifies us. That's why we go through these things because he cares about our holiness. Jesus is such a faithful, faithful savior that he will break you to rebuild you. 
he will break you to redeem you he will break he will break your bones to recapture your heart towards him he will bring suffering and hurt and pain to redirect you to lead you to holiness that's his faithfulness and i understand that so much better now like i'm so thankful for god that's not gonna just leave me in a comfortable situation but instead he's gonna give me he's gonna break me he's gonna remove things he's gonna all these things to make me holy because why would i want to be stagnant in my faith holiness over comfort so whenever you feel like you're more inclined to wanting comfort shift that shift that next one we have is god's will will always prevail like i said he doesn't need you for to help him he does it in his own timing and his timing is perfect his will is perfect everything about god is perfect and it's good it all comes to pass and his timing and his will the way he wants it to it all comes to pass he knows exactly how everything's supposed to go he knows everything next one pruning is love kind of like what i said about god's will is pain for all of these principles that i've kind of spoken about pruning is love if god sends you into a pruning season it's love like he loves you you know like i remember i listened to this one song and it basically said that pruning is god preparing you for more for greater things for more fruit for the next season that's what pruning is pruning is love it's loving like I, it's kind of like what i said before about holiness over comfort it's love it's so loving and it's a beautiful thing when god prunes you next one which kind of goes back to the same thing is focus on the fractal and not the mess i learned this from watching the shack there's a part where um the person who's in the shack goes into this messy garden it's like this is such a messy garden why is it so messy i don't like it it's so messy but then it's like from the inside yes from a narrow lens it's messy but like from a top view it's purposeful it's a pattern it's necessary it's beautiful so focus more on a wide lens or from a lens a godly lens then out your own lens because your own lens is limited and you might see things and think oh my god this is bad this is that that is that it's beautiful you know next one we have while waiting steward what you currently have and do it well so while you're waiting for something and a book i shared on instagram a book i highly recommend on this is embrace your almost by jordan lee dooley so when you're in the in between the almost that i want this i want that i want that like the best thing you could do steward what you currently have what is in your hand currently while you're waiting for the thing that god is still going to give you steward where you're currently at and steward well second last one we have is sometimes faith has growing pains it's beautiful when you go through growing pains because that means you're growing similar to like a baby or sim like when they have like sleep regressions or when they're teething or whatever the case might be like they have it's painful and they're going through it but it's a beautiful thing because they're growing that's a beautiful thing to remember sometimes faith has growing pains it won't always be that way but it's purposeful and lastly we have god's timing is perfect and i don't need to know i just need to trust this goes from proverbs trust in the lord with all your heart lean not on your own understanding submit all your ways to him and he will make straight your path simple like i said godly things are actually very simple they are hard yes because we're human and we're sinful and 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 but god's will and things are very simple and those are all the things among so many other lessons but these are the ones that like really just highlighted to me 2023 and all that the lord taught me through it and i'm so happy i got to share this with you guys but this is the end of the video if you have any lessons that you learned please comment those down below i would love to know what the lord taught you in 2023 and yeah this is the end of the video thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to give this video a big massive thumbs up comment down below subscribe to my channel and i'll see you guys in my next video bye